Ina Shevchenko, wonderful pleasure to have you with us. I wanted to talk to you first. What did you say at uh, Tujok Charlie? Why was it important? Well, it's very important to be part of this event and it's very important to say and repeat again and again that we are still Charlie three years after the terrorist attack, 25 years after the birth of the magazine, um, as they were celebrating their birthday this year. It's very important to, to say we are still Charlie as feminists because I think that um, being a feminist and trying to change the world, to trying to change the inegalitarian system, trying to change the system of dominance and the status quo, um, we need to, to be able to criticize authority, we need to be able to laugh at authority and I think that Charlie Hebdo really cleans the way for all the fights, for all the humanist fights with their courage, with, their, with the fight that they continue with dignity, with uh, proudness, with a lot of respect, even um, uh, respect to those who they criticize and consider ideological enemies. So I think that Charlie Hebdo is the greatest ally for feminists as well um, because us as feminists we point out on authorities, we laugh at authorities, we ridicule them with our actions, with our slogans, sometimes we attack them and therefore Charlie Hebdo are just an example as well for us and a great ally. And, uh, what do you say to people who would say that uh, Charlie offends? But, and also a nude protest offense, because that's something you hear quite a lot, topless activism. Well, I think that all progressist ideas or new ideas or brave ideas offend. And I think that there is nothing wrong with offense. I think the problem is that we allow this hysteria about um, feeling offended. There is no such a right not to be offended. Well, there is a right uh, unconditional fundamental right of freedom of expression. And think about it, who is offended? Well, in case of Charlie Hebdo, Femin, um, or other speakers at this conference, we talk about believers who are offended, right? But just think about it. Um, homophobes can be offended by speech supporting LGBT rights and conservatives, sexists will be in the same way, sincerely offended by a speech recognizing equality between genders. So th the feelings, you know, our feelings and offense of these feelings can never be um, a reason to stop someone from ex expressing their ideas. And you know, I'm going further than that. I go beyond this idea that we have to, you know, spread humanist ideas. I think that we have to spread all ideas. We have to express all ideas, even those ideas that I personally detest and hate and fight personally. I think that we have to engage finally in a competition of ideas, in an honest competition of ideas, not competition of weapons, right? So I think if we will be able to express our ideas, exchange, um, create the fight between those ideas uh, with our arguments win or lose um, and I think that the society will be much more peaceful and we will progress much faster. But can't you do uh, women's rights in an another way? Some will say why are you using uh, you know, women's body which is also used by pornography and uh, anti-women um, entities basically? Well, feminists can definitely be done in many, uh, many ways and uh, um, you know, those who believe uh, uh, in this myth, I don't know, who spread it that we consider that being topless is the only way to be feminist, well, it's, it's obviously ridiculous, um, but that's the way we choose and um, I support uh, various ways of uh, expressing yourself as feminist um, and I demand that other people also accept, if not support, but accept that I've chosen uh, this way, um, I consider my body to be uh, a, a war zone, a constant war zone where all the patriarchal institutions and specifically, especially religious institutions, uh, stage their war on this body. Um, and this is something what is the subject of our book uh, with the co-author and activist as well, uh, feminine activist Pauline Illier. Um, we are talking about how trimonotheist religions um, try to penetrate each of 
each part of our body, each part of female body with their dogmas, their ideas, their rules, try to impose those rules, they try to define what this body is, what its mission is, who, with who this body is allowed to uh, go in the bed, um, you know, what this body, how it should be open or closed. Well, that's the point that, you know, uh, of course, the women's body was always used and um, uh, was always... Um, it was used by and still used by various um, patriarchal institutions. Sex industry one, is one of them. Uh, religious institutions uh, is the other example. But that's the point that it's time now for women to define what their body is. Whether I want my hair to be, um, you know, to to be in the wind. Uh, whether I want. Um, my feet to run, to press on speed, uh, you know, when I drive car or drive bicycle or wear sh shorts on Monday or long skirt on Tuesday, it's, uh, it's me who decides. It's no, there is, you know, I don't allow any imam or priest um, or rabbi to decide it during their, um, you know, during their uh, prayers and during their patriarchal uh, meetings, I don't, I don't allow anybody to define who I am. Let me, to, let me do it. Let me do it. This is my right. And why they are so bothered by us, by the way? You know, I mean, they can, they, they, they have already a lot of work to do with themselves. So let me do my work with myself. I don't need your help. If I need, I will ask you. Otherwise, I don't need it. <laughs> One final question: What do you think about the protests in Iran and the, the fact that women? Are so much at the forefront. I think that this is the main um, and the most important thing that we have to emphasize. And I think many people have seen that, that it's women who are on the forefront and it's women who speak. I, when I watch the videos, I hear women's voices shouting slogans. I see women's bodies um, walking in front. I see women leading the crowds of men, men supporting. I think that this is just an incredible moment for everybody in Iran. But I also want to tell to Iranian people that it's an incredible moment for all of us out of Iran because they're incredible inspiration for this regressive left who is here, who is trying to um, justify these methods of oppression by kind of uh, presenting it as a, well, it's a culture, it's tradition, and therefore we cannot criticize it, therefore we cannot discuss it as if a bad culture or a violent traditions do not exist. And I think that they really, um, these people who march today um, in the streets of Iran, they give a great example for us and they also become a great answer to those who give up um, the fight, who try to, who, who turn on the side of communitarists uh, and therefore also support Islamists. Um, so I just want to say that uh, they're great inspiration. We're looking forward to see more of them and we are here to support all of them. And I think that Iranian revolution will happen and this time it will be not Islamic revolution, but feminist revolution, a women's revolution. Uh, look, you've uh, faced a lot of um, hate as well as violence. I mean, you've been kidnapped, you've been beaten. Uh, you, you spoke at an event where, you know, the Islamists came to kill with their Kalashnikovs. Uh, it, it, how do you carry on? Do you sometimes not worry that the fear will take over? You know, I, I will never say that I'm not afraid. I'm afraid. Yes, I am afraid constantly. Um, it affects my life a lot. But I think it also, it just actually helps me to continue. Because when I look around and I see who are my enemies, who are, who, who are those people who attack me, who um, send their threats, I know that I don't want my ideas to lose in front of their ideas. I know that we cannot allow to just give, give the fight, give it, give it up in front of those people moved by dogmas, in front of those people who want to build more walls between us, close all the doors, close our spirits and our minds. So actually um, the fact that this, the, the reaction on our actions it's very violent sometimes, it's scary and it's very difficult to leave it, but it's also a proof that this fight is needed. It's also a, a proof that these ideas irritate. Very often people, well not, not so often anymore, but 
I remember the times at the beginning of our fight um, when we started using topless protests and uh, using women's body as a political instrument, they were saying, well, nobody is irritated by this, nobody's afraid of this, um, you know, everybody's enjoying uh, women's naked bodies. Well, how they were, how they've been enjoying? They've been enjoying by bringing us to forests and torturing us, by um, forcing us to leave our countries, by beating us up in the street. Um, I don't think that they enjoy actually our bodies. Um, they are afraid of these bodies speaking. They want these bodies silent, then they enjoy those bodies. But when they see a naked, this, the same naked body that they could see on the cover of, of uh, a uh, men's uh, uh, magazine, now they see this naked body, but the body that speaks for itself with the female messages, femin uh, feminist messages, not messages of patriarchal, um, you know, carrying patriarchal culture um, and patriarchal messages. This irritates, this makes them afraid and scared because we shake, if not, if not, uh, if not change or destroy at the end patriarchal system, we shake it, we threaten it. We threaten it by uh, manifesting, by showing this body that was, was their tool, now became actually a tool against them.